Welcome to Firebase release notes for September, where we cover big and small releases from Firebase. We have six topics today, so let's dig in right away. First, let's talk about some exciting new features in Firebase AI Logic. Our SDKs already supported the Gemini Live API, which lets you create user experiences featuring natural, human-like voice conversations. However, the Live API was available only through the Vertex AI Gemini API. But now, we've expanded our integration to include a no-cost option through the Gemini Developer API. If you don't know the difference between these two APIs, here's a quick overview. I'll link the documentation in the description to help you choose which one is the best fit for your apps. The Live API support through the Gemini Developer API is now supported on our web, Flutter, Unity, and Android SDKs, with support for Apple platforms coming soon. Another new feature is image editing using Imagine Models, available for Android and Flutter. With the auto-detection capabilities, all you need to provide is an image along with a text prompt of what you want to change. Moving on, let's talk about the hybrid on-device inference for web apps. We've integrated hybrid on-device experience directly into our main Firebase JS SDK. This means that the library now can automatically check for Gemini Nano's availability on the user's browser and switch between executing the prompt on the device or on cloud-hosted models. Users can also specify a preference for which method to use. Last, we've launched several new capabilities that give you more control and observability of your AI features. For example, you can now debug and optimize your AI features with AI monitoring if you're on the Gemini Developer API. We have added support for several configurations and options for thinking models, which can improve the model's reasoning and multi-step planning abilities. And we now have support for limited-use tokens with Firebase App Check, giving you an extra layer of protection. To know more about each of these new capabilities, take a look at this blog post. Next up, we're enhancing remote config server-side capabilities. First, you can now use our server-side SDKs to fetch remote config values on your server and render your web pages with the correct variants from the start. Using this feature, you can improve the user experience by activating remote configurations at the right time, allowing you to avoid layout shifts, which results in a faster, smoother, and more professional experience. We've also expanded our server-side admin SDKs to include support for the Go language. This release enables Go developers to dynamically manage the behavior and configuration of server-side applications using remote config. And lastly, real-time remote config for web apps is generally available, which means now web clients can receive config changes as soon as they are published on the remote config console. Now, let's talk about Jenkit Go. It has reached version 1.0 and is now production-ready, bringing enterprise-grade reliability to Go developers building AI applications. Jenkit Go offers a unified API for multiple model providers, type safe flows, tool calling, and easy deployment as HTTP endpoints. The new Jenkit init AI tools command simplifies things. It lets you easily integrate with AI coding tools like the Gemini CLI. The integration provides these tools with the latest knowledge of the Jenkit framework. As a result, they can answer questions, generate accurate Jenkit code, and help debug AI flows by analyzing traces. To learn more about these features, check out the blog post. We also had some updates on Data Connect. First, we improved the Firebase console and CLI onboarding. Now you can set up your schemas, seed your database, and generate your initial operations via the Firebase console or the Firebase CLI. When it comes to editing your Data Connect schemas, you are no longer limited to the Firebase CLI. You can now edit Data Connect schemas directly in the Firebase console. And we launched new access transparency logs, which you can view in the Cloud Console. These logs give you greater visibility and control over your data. A quick update on Firestore. In Cloud Firestore with MongoDB compatibility, the lookup operator now supports the fields from, local field, foreign field, and as. For the full list of supported operators, take a look at the supported features documentation. New advanced settings are now available in AppCheck for customizing the verification of play integrity and recapture attestations. As a result, AppCheck now supports using play integrity with elevated integrity requirements for apps distributed exclusively on Google Play, using play integrity for apps that are released exclusively outside Google Play, and a custom app risk threshold for recapture v3 and recapture enterprise. 
To learn more, check out the AppCheck Advanced Settings documentations for Android and Web. And those were all the updates we had for today. As usual, all the links mentioned in this episode are available in the description below. So if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel below. My name is Marina, and I'll see you in a future episode of Firebase Release Notes.